Hi guys, I'm Krina and welcome to my channel. I am finally a permanent resident of Canada. It is so crazy to even say that out loud. And I had posted this good news on Instagram a few weeks ago and I got a lot of questions from you guys about the entire process, how long it took, how much it costed. So today I want to try to answer all those questions for you and hopefully this video will help you if you are applying for a PR in the future. My application was through a spousal sponsorship. Since my husband is a Canadian citizen, he sponsored my PR. Now there are two ways of applying. One is through an outland sponsorship, which is where you apply from outside of Canada. And the second way is through an inland sponsorship, which is basically when you apply after moving to Canada. Outland sponsorship was not possible for me because I got my marriage registered on the same day as the Hindu wedding ceremony. And if I would have applied from India, it would have at least taken me an entire year before I actually came to Canada with a PR. And um, that was just something that I wasn't comfortable doing. So my parents, brother and I had applied for a family tourist visa a few months before my wedding. And all four of us got it. It's much easier to apply as a family compared to just applying as an individual. So I came to Canada on a tourist visa and then I applied it through an inland sponsorship after moving here. So there are two sets of documents that you have to submit, one as an applicant and one from the sponsor. And as for the applicant, which is me, I had to submit uh, firstly my birth certificate, which is fine. The second document is a police clearing certificate. I knew about this one, so I had already got this from India when I came to Canada. And I had already submitted this when everything was done, my entire application was over with. And a few months later, there was a plot twist. I was asked to give a PCC from America. I was wondering why I had to do that and the answer was that you have to give a PCC from all the places that you've lived in for more than six months. I had lived in New York for an entire year in 2015 so then I had to get a PCC from America as well. And a PCC or police clearing certificate is basically a document that says that you don't have any criminal records from wherever you're coming from. Thirdly, you have to show proof of marriage and for this I had to submit my marriage certificate, I submitted my uh, wedding invitation from both the sides, then I submitted over 30 to 35 pictures and at the back of each picture I literally had to write down who was in the picture, what day it was taken on, what the occasion was, I had to submit a lot of bills as well. So I submitted my bills for the venue, the caterer, the photographer the bills for my jewelry and the outfits that I wore during my wedding and honestly the more you give the better and you just have to prove it to them that there was actually a wedding that took place and you are actually married. The fourth thing is that you would have to prove your relationship. Luckily my husband and I were in a seven year relationship before we got married so we had enough photos from that and we had taken a few trips so we had to show pictures of that as well and then even after our wedding um, we had our honeymoon we had a few different trips that we took in Canada so I had enough pictures to prove the relationship so I submitted all of that and then after my application was already submitted a few months later I got an email saying that they want more proof so like I'm saying the more you submit the better because even after submitting everything that I just mentioned right now it still wasn't enough so at that point, I had to take screenshots of the emails that we had exchanged back when we started dating and then um, uh, several uh, screenshots of my social media posts. So I had posted about Jahan on Facebook and on Instagram. So I literally took screenshots of all those posts and I had to submit that as well. And then um, Jahan used to come and visit me to India during the seven years of our relationship so we submitted all the stamps on his passport stating that listen like he actually came to india to meet me this entire section is to basically prove that you were in a relationship and it's just not like a fake relationship for a pr the fifth thing is to show proof of joint utility now this is basically to prove that you are living together and you're paying bills together so for this, I had to submit three documents and the first thing that I submitted was my driver's license. After moving here, I got my driver's license immediately. So on that, I had the same address as Jahan's home address. So that basically showed that we're living together in the same house. The second one was the phone bill. 
So now I'm on a phone plan with Jahan and his entire family. We're all on the same family plan. So I showed a screenshot of that as well. So the third document that I submitted was my vehicle insurance. So we are on the same insurance plan with his family. And that, those three things were enough to prove that we're actually living together and paying bills together. So those were all the documents that I had to submit as an applicant. But then we had a few more documents that we had to submit from the sponsor side as well. And these were some documents that my husband had to submit basically just to show or to prove that he is capable of supporting me. And the first document for that was his employment offer. So we submitted the letter of employment that he got from his company. Then secondly, we had to show his salary slips, which prove that he's actually employed. Then we had to submit his tax return forms. So all his tax returns were submitted as well. Then we had to show his proof of citizenship to show that he's actually a citizen of Canada. And lastly, we had to submit all of his passport details. So once again, we had to scan all the pages of his passport and print those out and submit that as well. I landed in Canada on June 7th of 2019 and it took us around three months to gather all of these documents that I just mentioned. So it did take us quite some time and my application was finally submitted like everything was done by 1st of August. So when you apply for the PR process, you can apply just for the PR or a PR and a work permit together, which is what I did. So on the 1st of August, like I had mentioned, I submitted all my applications and on the 15th of October, so within two months time, I got my work permit. So I was super happy because honestly, without my work permit, I was not able to get a job. I was literally just stuck at home and that was hard. But I got my work permit in October, which was a blessing because I could finally start working again. More than the PR, I was actually excited to get my work permit. And after I got my work permit, I sent my passport to Ottawa. Now, basically this process was to get a stamp on my passport which said that I am on a worker visa now. So all this while I was still on a tourist visa and this was not part of this process. I had to pay extra to get this done. And after I sent my passport in within three weeks time, two to three weeks, I got my passport back from Ottawa with a stamp that said I'm officially a worker in Canada. So this worker visa stamp honestly enabled me to go to India. I did not even imagine going back to India till I got my PR. But I spoke to my agent and she said that as long as you have a worker stamp on your passport and you have a job, you can legally come back to the country. And that's why I had gone to India in February. If you've not watched my India vlog, I'll link it right here so you can watch it later. But yeah, that was a blessing because I finally got to go and meet my parents after six months. So after October, I heard back from them in December. So the first week of December, I got an email to get all my medical tests done. And in order to do that, I just had to go to a doctor and I had to get my blood work done and I had to get an x-ray done. So after that, I heard from them within a week's time. So on December 20th, I got an email for my biometrics. Now, the funny story here is that all of this was getting so expensive that I wanted to save as much money as I can. And I'm going to tell you about the cost in like two minutes. I'll tell you exactly how much I spent on this entire process. For my biometrics, they had given a form and I had to submit my fingerprints. So all 10 fingerprints were going to be printed on that. Now what I did was I went to Staples, I bought an ink pad and I stamped all my fingers on it. Within a week, I got an email saying that they're rejecting my fingerprints because they can't see it. Now, obviously they can't see it because it wasn't proper. And to get my fingerprints done professionally, it was like $70. It was ridiculous, but obviously I had to end up doing that because that's the only thing that they approved. So if you guys are ever getting biometrics done, please do it professionally. It will be expensive, but it'll save a lot of time. But in all of this drama, just to save money, I wasted three weeks there. After my biometrics, I finally got another update in March. Now, this was not a good update. This is when they actually emailed me saying that they are not satisfied that I'm actually living here and working here. And luckily, at this time, we were finally living in this apartment. So we had proof of rent. We had proof of bills. We had our joint bank account so we could prove all of that. I even had an employment letter from my employer, which basically stated that I am working here and I'm living here. Finally, on June 2nd, I heard back from them again. Again, not a good news, but basically they said that all the passport pages that I had printed that I had mentioned earlier, you know, I had to scan each and every page of my passport. They are not satisfied with the quality of that. <sighs> so basically, 
I had to scan all the pages of my passport again. Luckily this time I could send it to them digitally so it was completely fine. So basically I submitted all the pages of my passport once again. And within one week's time, I was granted my Canadian permanent residency. Honestly, I was jumping like for an hour. It was such a relief that all of this was worth it. It was all done with. So they did not give me the PR card yet. For that, I had to submit two pictures and you have to get them done professionally, which was again, more money that I had to spend. And I just submitted that last week. So within the next two or three weeks, I should be getting my physical PR card. I know you guys are waiting for this. Um, honestly, there are so many costs that you can avoid, but I just wanted to be super safe and just be very careful with this entire process. And I did hire an agent to do this. Um, I did go to an agency who does immigration and who does PR for Indians in Canada. So the agent did charge a fee of $1,695 with tax. Then my PR application was $1,040. And since I had applied for a work permit together, that was another $282. Then my biometrics was $85 and that Oh my god, that stupid fingerprint that I had to get done professionally, that was another $65. Then I paid another $25 to get my PCC from America, which most of you guys might not even have to do. Then my medical tests were so expensive, that was surprising. It was $300 just to get my blood work done. And then it was another $40 to get my x-ray done. So I spent $340 for that. Then I spent another $100 to send my passport to Ottawa to get my worker stamp on it. But yeah, as you guys can see, this is super expensive. Honestly, not much has changed after I got my PR because on a tourist visa itself, I was able to open a bank account. I was able to get a driver's license and drive around. And after I got my work permit, I was able to work. And those are the three things that I actually wanted. And I had received all of that by October, so I was completely fine. But the main thing that changed after I got my PR was that I got my health card. Getting a health card is so important in Canada because it literally covers all your healthcare fees for free. So you only have to pay for medicines, but if you ever want to visit a doctor, if you ever want to get anything checked, that would be done for free. God forbid if I ever need to get any major surgery done, if anything ever happens to me, that will also be covered with my health card. The second most important thing about getting a PR is that it kickstarts your journey towards getting your citizenship. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that this helped you in some way or another. Also, please hit the subscribe button. It's just a click away. I would love for you to be a part of my YouTube family. I'll be back with more videos very soon. Until next time, bye.